3D printer PEI beds. What are the pros and cons and when should you use smooth versus textured? This video is a Patreon request. Explore the merits of PEI beds with a focus on when to use smooth versus textured for performance and durability. If you prefer another surface such as glass, build tack or garolite, that's perfectly fine. We just won't be looking at them in detail here. Let's commence with a look at what exactly PEI is and how it's used with 3D printers. Polyether imide, also known as PEI, is a type of thermoplastic. It's particularly well suited for 3D printing because it can take a beating with a glass transition temperature of 217 degrees. The Ultim derivatives can be used in 3D printing in the form of high temperature, very tough filament. But this is rare as it needs an extruded temp of the mid 300 degrees and a bed temp of around 150 plus a heated chamber, putting it out of reach of the average 3D printer. Therefore, for FDM 3D printing, PEI is most commonly used as a surface for the print bed. As we said, it's tough, can handle high temperatures, and when warm, a variety of 3D printing filaments will stick to it nicely. PEI beds come in two flavours, the first being a smooth sticker sheet, which we apply as we saw earlier by carefully transferring it to our build surface. The alternative to this is a textured PEI bed, which is applied to the build surface by manufacturers rather than ourselves. The technique for this is beautifully demonstrated by this short video by Crispy Media. The item is electrostatically charged before a powder is blown over it, the charge helping the powder cling to the surface. The coated part then goes into an oven where the powder will be heated, melting it together into a uniform coating. The results can be stunning and I'd highly recommend watching this video linked below. It's short and really well shot. We have some background, so why would you choose PEI for your bed? PEI, like any solution, has its own strengths and weaknesses. Definitely a pro, but sometimes a con for PEI is that it's flexible. Let me explain. In both the smooth sticker sheet or powder coated versions, PEI is flexible enough to go on a spring steel sheet, and that means you can flex the sheet to easily remove your prints. And this flexing can be quite subtle. A lot of the time you don't even need to completely remove the sheet, just a little flex from one corner will be enough to get the part loose. So how is this possibly a downside? Well, the problem is if your bed is warped, the PEI sheet will be flexible enough to conform to the shape of the bed, which means it will still be warped. One advantage of using a glass bed is that they typically stay quite flat, even when sitting on top of a warped aluminium bed underneath. Maybe everyone doesn't know this, but PEI sheets will self-release the part as they cool down, just like glass. With PLA at least, if you allow the bed to cool, the part will naturally self-release, meaning you don't even need to remove or flex the bed. This is also the case for either textured or smooth PEI beds. However, this is not ideal if you're relying on power out protection. Just like with glass, if the power is off for long enough for the bed to cool down, the part will start to self-release and this will likely result in a catastrophic failure. For this reason, if I've got a large print that I'm worried about being interrupted, I'll use a machine with a build tack surface, which should still grip the part, even if the bed cools down completely. A big pro for me is that PEI is durable in most circumstances. Not all, but we'll get to that later. With textured glass, if your level or your auto bed leveling system is off and the nozzle makes contact with the bed, it's gonna permanently damage the bed, whether the nozzle is hot or cold. On a build tack surface, if the hot nozzle touches it, it's gonna melt straight through. What you're seeing here is the result of ABL probing failing. If you simply have your first layer too close to the nozzle, there's a good chance you'll suffer from permanent damage. Compare this to PEI sheet, or in this case, the PEX variant. This cross hatching you can see here is from a print that was started with the nozzle far too close to the bed and it effectively engraved a pattern in the surface. Yes, we can feel it with our finger, but the print surface is still completely usable. You might notice in time that tiny bubbles form under the PEI, but they're inconsequential and don't affect it at all. With the build tack surface, if your first layer is far too close, the smeared filament is probably going to be stuck there forever. Whereas with a smooth PEI sheet, I have no problem taking a flat blade and using it to clean off any filament shavings. And while I'm not going to take a flat blade to a textured surface, it's still robust enough that you can use your fingernail or a hard piece of plastic to scrape off any filament that's built up in the crevices. In fact, PEI is tough enough 
that you can apply a solvent such as isopropyl alcohol or even acetone and give it quite a vigorous scrubbing with steel wool or some fine sandpaper. You'll be able to remove any grime as well as any thin bits of stuck on filament and rejuvenate the surface almost back to new. With a textured PEI bed, it might seem scary, but you can give it the same cleaning treatment. Apply a solvent and then give it a gentle rub down with steel wool and you'll be able to clean up the print surface significantly. Just remember to wipe it down afterwards with a paper towel to remove any debris. It's certainly not the only bed material that I use, but it definitely is my favorite. If you agree or have another bed preference, please let me know why in the comments. We have smooth, we have textured, so let's compare them filament by filament. I've been fortunate enough to try a wide range of PEI beds from a number of manufacturers. The ones I've probably used the most are from Wham Bam, and I've been a fan since I backed their original Kickstarter. It should be noted that they have two different materials. The textured beds are PEI, but the smooth sticker sheets are actually PEX, a proprietary variation that has slightly different properties and we'll address that soon. Other brands that I've used extensively include the PEI Sheets by Prusa for the Mark III and the Mini in both smooth and powder coated. I've also been quite happy with TH3D Easy Flex plates, this textured Prima Creator plate that came with the Rat Rig V-Core 3, and also some generic smooth PEI sheets from various places. I've also used a few of these textured sheets from Big Tree Tech, but based on what's on their website, it's very hard to tell exactly what the material is. The reason I'm pointing this out is that between all these different brands of bed, brands of filament and different types of 3D printers, there's going to be a lot of variation. So what follows works for me, but you can count it as a starting point and experiment from there. We're going to start off with what I think is the most popular filament, certainly what I use the most, and that's PLA. In my experience, PLA sticks equally well to smooth or textured surfaces. So the decision really comes down to aesthetics, whether you want the underside of your part to be shiny and glossy or whether you're looking for a textured pattern because it suits the object you're printing. The amount of texture, of course, will depend on the type of plate you're using and things like how translucent your filament is. If you allow the bed to cool completely, your parts will self-release with zero effort as we discussed earlier. However, if you're in a hurry or just plain impatient, you can release the part before it's completely cooled by flexing the plate the PEI is most likely adhered to. I like to use a bed temp of 60 degrees Celsius, unless it's PEX, in which case I up it to 70. You'll need your first layer a little more squished than you will when printing with BuildTac, whether that's genuine BuildTac or the clone versions. And as we've seen, we have two methods of removal, depending on how patient we are. One technique you can employ for tricky prints that you're expecting to curl up is to coat the PEI sheet with a thin layer of hairspray. This will improve the first layer adhesion at the expense of losing the ability to self-release the parts when cool, but all that means is you have to flex a little. Next up, we have TPU, a flexible filament which goes well with PEI beds. TPU is quite easy to stick to the bed, and again you can use smooth or textured depending on your preference for that part. A key difference here compared to other filaments is that we don't need to heat the bed for TPU, and if we do, it risks sticking too well. We don't need a particularly squished or loose first layer, and since the bed wasn't heated when we were printing, there's nothing to wait for when the print is done, we can start to peel off the part immediately. Let's step up the difficulty significantly by introducing PETG, and this difficulty exists because PETG can stick too well. For my printer dedicated to printing PETG full time, I use a textured PEI sheet, which the parts have no problem sticking to. Because of this, for BuildTac I'd run the bed at 80, but for PEI or PEX I'd actually drop that to as low as 70. And I'd also recommend raising the Z offset to move the nozzle further from the bed for the first layer. Just to clarify, we're moving from the right amount of squish towards the realm of the nozzle being too far. As the filament grips so well, it's better to have slight gaps in your first layer than risk ripping chunks of your PEI powder coating from your bed or chunks out of the PEI sticker sheet. To further help this, only try to remove your parts after the bed has cooled down as much as possible. As I said, I'm using a Prusa PEI powder coated sheet for my permanent PETG printer. After many dozens of prints, I have noticed some light visual deterioration, but the performance of the sheet remains the same. Compare this to a sticker sheet which is also wearing over time and has more significant damage in the center where parts are touching more often. PETG is known to destroy some bed surfaces, especially borosilicate glass, 
So if you are having trouble, I'd recommend checking out this video from Maker's Muse where Angus explores G10 as a better alternative for PETG. So how about ABS, ASA and derivatives like Apollo X? Bed performance is pretty good, which is why I use a smooth PEX sheet on my Ender 5 which is enclosed and dedicated to these materials. A good bed temperature for ABS is usually 100 degrees and I up this to 110 when using the smooth PEX. I'll also regularly use hairspray to get that bit of extra grip. Filaments like ABS stick well enough to PEI, so the only troubles come as the part starts to cool and the prominent shrinkage of these materials can cause enough distortion to lift up the printed object from the bed. If you can control warping, perhaps with an enclosure, then PEI or PEX can stand up to printing these filaments well. I found once that everything cools, the part should flex off without too much trouble and the print surface suffers minimal wear. Well that was clearly too easy, so how about something harder like nylon? If you thought ABS was bad for warping and then detaching, it's got nothing on nylon, which is why I rarely bother with it despite it being a very durable and temperature resistant filament. Nylon, unlike PETG, is not going to bond strongly with PEI and won't damage the bed, which I confirmed with Prusa support. But just because it won't get damaged doesn't mean it works particularly well. In fact I had more success, if you can call it that, by sticking on painter's tape. Based on my limited testing, I really don't think PEI is a suitable bed surface for nylon, but I'm more than happy to be proven wrong, so please get your tips into the comment section. One more category and that's exotic filaments such as Peak. The thing about Peak is that it's extremely tough, but it does need to be printed with a nozzle temperature of 400 degrees. Thinking that Peak and PEI wouldn't necessarily stick well to each other, I purchased some Dimafix print bed adhesive and applied it to smooth PEI sheet. After doing this, I was pleased to find that the peak stuck quite well. In fact, it stuck a little too well, taking a chunk of the PEI with it. This wasn't a repeat of PETG, however, but rather my failure to account for the added thermal expansion of the bed being heated all the way up to 140 degrees, which pushed my first layer far too close. When the Z offset was changed to provide suitable clearance, I found that the peak would peel off the PEI quite nicely. So based on my limited testing, because the filament was $1 a kilo, with a bed temperature of 140 degrees and plenty of nozzle clearance, it appears PEI might be quite suitable for peak. Just realise that with a hot end this hot, it's very easy to damage the printer bed if the first layer nozzle clearance is too low. That's a summary of how I use this effective and versatile print surface. Most of the time, smooth versus textured will simply come down to your preference for the surface finish. If you're looking for maximum grip, I would tend towards the smooth bed with hairspray or another adhesive, but if you're looking for more durability, I would suggest the textured bed. I'm sure on this topic there's a lot of knowledge and opinions in the community, so please see yours in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.